All right, I got a problem. This ain't fitting, it's too short. What did I do wrong? Think about it, come on, come on, think about it. I use a three quarter inch pattern. And when I set it up here on my seven eighths, okay, when you move it to the outside, See it? See right there, guys? Got it? You always got to go to your fit side. I mean, in this case, the inside where it's going to be fitting. And I'm sitting here yapping and running my mouth, and I did it to the outside without thinking. So now I've got this matched piece of tiger maple that's too short. What do I do? I got a board stretcher. Come on. Zoom in on this head. That's all right. Jeff's in here taking pictures so you can check it on the blog. See how short I am? Now, I did not do this intentionally. But I kept thinking this 7 8 base looks too heavy. So yeah, we're going to stretch it, sort of. And that's sort of stretching the truth of what we're going to be doing. What we're going to do is all we got to do is taking it off of the back is reduce this down to the same three-quarter thickness. And it'll come back and fit. So taking it, because it's on an angle, taking the material off the back, she'll come right in. So I'm going to go to the back, zip it a couple times to the planer, and come back and see what we got. All right, guys. Wood removal to the rescue. Fits perfect. All we did was took it down to three quarters. Yeah. Don't y'all do that. But if you do, now you know how to fix it. All right. Now what are we going to do? Now we're going to take... It's hard to see on the... In this, now we've got this... Nice little scroll down here, and we're going to put we're going to scroll our base and get it together. So let's do the scroll. First thing we do, and we're going to get a better camera angle here just in a second. We're taking our piece of MDF and found the center. Then I measured down an inch and a half, and then just drew a line out here. Now I'm going to roughly show you what we're going to do, but I'm going to kind of show you on this dirty backside. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little arc. It has a little notch in it. And this is going to actually be, well, let me get, try to get it better. It's going to have a little arc in it. Then we're going to do a, then it's going to come out. Over here on the corner, comes out, comes down. Have a little hook like on it, kind of like a bracket foot. Oh, I wish I could draw, but I can't. And then it's going to be kind of like that. But maybe not as ugly. So let me show you how we're going to do it. Now I'm going to show you what I've done. I drew my center line. And I told you. I made a mark the top down inch and a half. Then I went from the bottom up an inch and three eighths. So one more time. This is one and a half, one and three eighths. Then I took my compass from the one and three eighths point and I set it at the one and a half point and I simply drew an arc. Now I'm going to take my combination square and set it on 45. And all I'm going to do is come right to my 1 and 3 eighths point where the arc comes in. Then I 
one over here to the end. And I was playing around, see what I thought was going to look good. Again, down inch and a half. This point to this point. Now, yeah, I'm, I played around a little bit. I take a one and I have a one and three eighths portioner bit. Nothing fancy. Came in two and a half inches on center, and I'm going to drill it. With that done, I want to make a foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in at the top of this and I'm just going to sweep it down. That's all I need, right here. Just a little sweep. Now in here, what I'm going to do is I want to curl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep this up and start. Now I've got a big French curve. And you can usually find these at the craft stores, places. So staying with my one and three eighths, what I want to create here is I want to create a sweep down and then a sweep up. Just about like what I've got. Except I don't I don't want to be real low to the floor. I want right here from the point, I want to be up here about quarter, three-eighths of an inch. And I just want to make a, a nice, light little sweep up. Let's take a look. Oops. Now this is our pattern we're making. Got it. All we're doing is making a nice little sweep. This will come down. Now one of the one other thing we can do right here on the bottom of this foot that I think looks pretty good is let's just put a little finish point. In other words, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm you'll see it. I'm going to make a little make the little straight point and have it sweep on up. Now all I'm doing with you right now is thinking out loud. I'm going to go to the bandsaw and I'm going to bandsaw this out. Get it looking what I like. And you do the same. You know, one of the things you want is you just want to keep nice sweeping lines. Okay. All right, a little clean up. I think we got a kind of a nice looking little base going here. I like that. I've used this scroll a lot of times. Um, I think, I don't know if I told you yet, this scroll, this part in here, there's a, there was a shaker by the name of Daniel Searing, and uh, this particular piece was in one of the shaker museums up in Ohio, and I saw this particular scroll, and I just fell in love with it, and I've used it, I kind of adopted it as my own, and I had used it time and time again. The cool thing about it was it was pretty elaborate for a piece of shaker furniture. And, uh, but they were, the Ohio, it's kind of western Ohio, and you get out into Kentucky, into Pleasant Valley, and, uh, Pleasant Hill I think it is, they were a little bit more, they weren't quite as strict, let's just say, and so sometimes you saw things with a little bit more embellishment and whatever. 
but this was on a this is actually on a chest of drawers and uh, that chest of drawers is done on a tiger maple and I, I'm assuming it was done in a varnish or something like that because like we talked about the color that we use this thing is almost pumpkin orange and the, and the figure and curl is just gorgeous the only thing he did we're not doing is that he actually 45 this he 45 this and put a vertical grain which we're not doing and one of the reasons is we don't need that because we've got the vertical grain coming down from the side of the case it's going to give us a tremendous amount of strength here so this kind of emulates a bracket foot and gives us a little snap now one of the things we want to do don't don't make this point on this really really tight don't make it super sharp and what we want to do here is we want to, you know, I have a drum sand, you know, oscillating drum sander. I can clean this up with. But, you know, there's nothing wrong again with a good file and a rasp. They do great. And I, done, I think I told you in an earlier webisode, my absolute favorite, particularly on MDF, is these Japanese files. Man, them things just... And we, we just want to keep everything flowing real nice. We don't want any bumps or lumps. You know, that brings up the point. You know, the next, I think in the next webisode, we're going to be doing uh, a low boy, a mahogany low boy that has cabriolet legs on it. Let me tell you something. You're a whole lot better to have all four of those legs vary a little and keep that, keep that nice flow. That flow in that, not having lumps and bumps, is a whole lot more important than all those legs being identically the same. I left the line on this side so I can, I'm just rasping to it. Big dowels, piece of sandpaper, be great in there. All right, Ed, Jeff wants to get a few pictures. We've got enough. All right, now that we've got our pattern made up, I'm going to trace it over to the actual piece of wood. Now make sure this piece is angled as well, so make sure you use the combination square or your center line here to make sure that you're in line. See right here, it looks like you got an offset, but you really don't. You want to be point to point. Now I'm actually tracing this out with a Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing. But also, when I cut this, I'm actually going to leave the line, and then we're just going to router cut this of a flush trim bit using our pattern. Now one of the things I am going to do, I'm going to go to the uh, drill press and I'm going to drill out this point right here and this point just so that it's clean and neat and be done. Then I'll band saw it.
All right, guys, what I've done, all I did was take the base and uh, after I cut it out in my pattern, I just screwed it on. The back will never be seen, so the screws are fine. And I'm just going to put it in here, and I'm going to take a flat a bit and clean it up. Now, the bit I'm going to use, because i got this figure tiger maple, I'm going to be using that spiral cut. It's a half inch spiral. These things just, they cut a slick edge. And this is a down cut, down shear. And I'm just going to cut it and be done. Might have to take a file rasp, clean up a little something, but pretty much it's, it's going to do what we need. Now what I need to do is I just need to go through and take my rasp and define my little points a little bit. Other than that, we're done. And we'll do that and we come back, we're going to look at getting it on the case. All right, my last thing I'm going to do to my base is I want to run a little 3 16 radius roundover bit. Uh, I just want to ease them edges a little bit. Now the other thing we're going to do when we sand this is where we get this rounded edge right here where we round to get over is you want to take your little file and this is a little too rough a little piece of sandpaper on a stick or a fine file and you want to bring those points in to make them define well. Okay, now when we set this up here, we're going to find out we got some problems. What are they? 
Well, we got feet in behind it. So we got to do a little trimming on our feet in order to do that. So we'll come back and take a look and do that. All right, guys, see what we got? Right here behind his foot, we've got a little, a little bit of extra wood. So we need to take a jigsaw or something and get that out of there. That's exactly what we're going to do. All right, now I'm going to make you laugh. Because they're laughing at me. I think these are the pants that I got the magic marker on the back. It's magic marker. When you're filming and everybody's telling you what to do, you see my hands and you got a magic marker land, and you get up here and you do this while you're listening to them, and there's a magic marker on the bench, it ain't a good idea. Jeez. Oh, We're doing woodworking. We're not doing shop attire. All right. I'm going to get a jigsaw and get that out of there. puppy on here. Get it I'm get, now what I want to do is I want to get it lined up and clamped in place. Now this particular piece of wood, I got a little bit of bow in it, so I really want to clamp it down well, make sure I got everything fitted. Now here's what's going to happen. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clamp this down and then I'm going to go back to the table saw and I'm going to cut my length to make sure I'm fitting well. Now, all I'm going to glue on here at the moment is I want to just glue the two ends together. Now, that's not a very strong joint. It's just a butt glue. And I could, you know, do biscuits and all of that. But what's going to wind up happening once we get the, our, our doors and everything made and everything like that, all of this is actually, we're going to be coming in the back of here and screwing it on. So I really don't need a super, super strong joint here. But there's one other thing I can do to cheat a little bit to make it even stronger. And that's after it's dried. What I can do is go in right here and just drill up in there a little bit, and if I want to, and then just glue like a quarter inch dowel or something in it. But I doubt I even do that because, like I said, it's going to be mounted to the case. It's never going anywhere. So I'm going to get some clamps and get this clamped in place, and you'll see what I mean. All right, guys, what we're going to do, I want to get glue on both surfaces here. But something I want you to notice. I got two pieces of masking tape sitting up here on top of this piece ready. Remember when we glued up the sides how we used the masking tape to help pull our, our seam nice and tight? It'll be the same thing. And you notice the wax paper. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up tight right here on this edge. Just like we normally do. Get some tape across it good. So that it hinges it. And that'll pull my seam nice and tight. What we got? Got it. Flush up here at the top. Nice and tight. A little pressure just to make sure we got the glue, the excess glue out. I'm going to get a clamp on it. Now, if it's not going tight for you, this one's fine. If it's not going tight for you, get a little pressure on there. Take your mallet and tap it, but you got to be secure. I've actually done push myself away a little bit here. All right, 
I'm in there. Okay, I'm going to do the other side, and we let it dry. All right, while the base is on there and the corners are drying, let's get to the moldings. Now, the first thing you notice on my miter slide, I put a different fence. I want something a little longer, not quite as high. Now, to get your angle, same piece that we used on the sides. Set up. Run it through. Set your blade to where you're right on your angle. Now make a test cut. Make sure it's fitting. And by that, it's exactly what we did. Just take a scrap of MDF or whatever you got and make sure you're coming in with a really nice tight joint. Now, we're going to start for this little guy right here. This is that thin molding we made, okay? Now, the issue I'm going to have when I go to cut this is that I have to cut this corner in this direction right here. And, yeah, I can reverse the saw. I, I can move the... I can move the um, miter gauge, and that's probably a good way to do it. But I don't want to take a chance on getting off on my angle because I'm not at a perfect 22 and a half. So all I have to do really is to take something that makes up this space we left in the back. All we have to do is put in a nice little straight edge call, just like this, and we can make our cut. See what I'm showing you? Now, the only problem with this one is it's too wide. I don't want nothing that wide. I don't want to be that little tinny lip hanging over this edge. See this? So this is the only protection I've got from this wanting to kick back. There's not enough edge there. The larger molding, we would be okay. But I think this piece of three-quarter MDF is just about perfect. It is. See, I just want something that's going to keep me flat, tight, and to the top. So I'm just going to make my cut. I'm going to make my first cut. Now remember again, I've left plenty here because I got to reverse this cut just in a minute. like we're doing good. Oh yeah, that fits nice. All right, we want to be point to point, meaning that the point right here on top of this cabinet is going to be where we want our point to be. But the thing we got here we're going to be cutting this on this back angle. So this is our, there's no real point here or here that we can actually gauge off of. So we really got to be really tight here and sneak up on this. We're going to be cutting on the, the correct angle. You notice I cut the left side of the case, or facing the case, I cut the left side first. So that if, when I'm nibbling this, when I'm working on this edge, I don't have to use the MDF call. I don't have to use the MDF spacer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make me a cut. Now, just keep the camera there. One of the reasons that I made this switch to this other call or this other fence is that when I go to cut this, this fence is going to give me a guide as to where I'm coming through. See, so I know that this inside edge here is going to be my final cut. So I'm, I'm going to wiggle that out until I get it. 
Got it? But this, this, let me cut this real quick and show you. See what I'm talking about? If you can see this little mark right there. But see what this is going to do, this this shows me I can this gives me a gauge at this point and I also have a gauge at this point. So I can actually take off just a finite little bit of wood and sneak up on that thing. Alright? So that's what we're going to do. If we mess up, we need to mess up on the big one. We got an extra one of them around, I think. We ain't got any extra of these, I'm pretty sure. All right, so I'm gonna sneak up on this, just keep going. All right, guys, now I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to, this is made by Logan. Uh, I got it at Woodcraft. It's a, it's a little sander that's made, uh, picture framers use a lot. And it's pricey, I'm going to tell you that up front. Uh, what is this thing, Jeff, 170 bucks or so? But I'm going to tell you what, if you do a lot of miters, ooh. and I'm, I mean, we're fine on the table saw. Now, one of the things, you've got a 45 degree setting, and, and the way this works basically is this. All right, this comes around using, it's got a little green dot on it. That's a 45, okay? Then it's marked for different, how many sides you're doing. It has a five, a six, and eight. And an eight, if you were making a kind of an octagon shaped, you know, picture frame, you would have eight sides. That's 22 and a half, where it works out. Anyway, so what happens is you just simply set to whatever it is you want, okay? In this case, that's it right there. And I can come in on this, and I can sand. And somebody's going to ask me why it's so expensive. I... I only thing I can tell you is the thing built like a tank. And it just works. This is 80 grit. And I'll tell you what, little teeny moldings, man, this thing is sweet. But I'm going I'm to repeat myself. We did just fine on the table saw. Okay? No, but I'm close enough here. I'm pretty close. All right, guys, it's time to glue this molding. Everybody seen me do this. There's even a YouTube video on it, I think. Is there a YouTube video on it, Sherry? Making molding miters? Yeah, there is. Jeez. Hmm. All I'm doing is taking some tight bond three glue, butt joining them, button them up nice and tight, and I'm going to let them dry. Then, make sure you get plenty of glue because that end grain likes to suck it up good. This is what move around just a little so I'm going to clamp it. I've actually taken a little piece of wood, but you notice the tape so you don't glue to it and stick it under there and just take a little squeeze, clamp, anything, put on there. Just something to hold it until that glue dries some. All right, here's what I'm talking about. Uh, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. 
You see where we took this, of course, larger molding. You see where we took the portion a bit, drilled it, then band sawed a wafer to go in there, again, about half the thickness, glued it in with the grain running across the joint. That's what locks it in. Glued it in place. Now, you gotta do, you gotta let your joint set before you do that. Because if you don't, then you're, you know, it's two operations. Now, the cool thing about it is when you do this, make sure the little point where you marked it out, keep it up. So that if this wafer is setting high in the molding, you can chisel it down or whatever. But you, once it's dry, you can also take the same portion of it and just mm, take it down below the surface a little bit, and you've got a reinforced molding.